Hey, and welcome back. My name is Tyler, and today we're going to do something a little different. Just a couple days ago, Autogen actually released a new video, but it wasn't on their channel. It was on the Microsoft Research Team channel. So you might not have actually known about it. I only knew about it because it popped up on the Autogen subreddit for me. The video is only like five minutes long, but I want to I wanna watch it with you, and then I'll kind of pause it a couple points, and um, whenever I feel like I need to pause it and say something, I'll do that, but we're gonna, let's just watch this whole thing together. So the first thing is... This guy, um, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce his name. I probably can't do it correctly, but he is one of the, well, it says principal researchers, but he's kind of like, I think the main guy for the GitHub repo. So if on GitHub, on their GitHub, his uh, handle is Sonichi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he is one of the guys that like is always um, commenting on issues and requests and uh, putting updates on their GitHub. Just so you know, just kind of aware of who this guy is. He's one of the main uh, guys on their GitHub. I'm from Microsoft Research AI Frontiers. I'm excited to share with you the latest news about Autogen. Autogen was motivated by two big questions. What are the future AI applications like, and how do we empower every developer to build them? Last year, I worked with my colleagues and collaborators from Penn State University and University. And this is something to remember, right? just at the end of last year this came out so it's still the autogen framework the like the framework itself is still very infant right i think it's just like october probably when this paper came out and then the github came out that same month i believe and so it's still very young for everything that it can do i know there are other frameworks out there but for everything it can do in the way it can in the way it can orchestrate the agents and each one can do, perform something and they can talk to each other it's pretty amazing right and they're like every week there's a new version coming out so just you know, keep that in mind um, that they're always that they're always updating Autogen. University of Washington on the new multi-agent framework. We have been building Autogen as a programming framework for agentic AI like PyTorch for deep learning. We developed Autogen inside an open source project Flamo, and in last October mm. we moved it to a standalone repo on GitHub. Since then. We've got new feedback from users every day, everywhere. Users have shown really high recognition of the power of Autogen. Yes, yeah, so Flamel and is And they the have deep understanding of the value project in different dimensions, from. like flexibility, modularity, simplicity. A of, Let's a check one there. example use case. All right, I hope they have an actual use case for whatever they're gonna talk about instead of just saying that they used um, an agent framework. In our data science department, Autogen is helping us develop a production-ready, multi-agent framework. Our first target is to reduce the barriers to clinical data analytics and to enable our broader community to derive insights. We are also extending Autogen to meet the strict requirements of our industry with the sensitive nature of our data. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. I want to go back to what this guy said, though. Okay, so extending Autogen strict requirements from industry given sense of the nature of our data. Okay, so this is actually something um, that I, I don't know if you're necessarily aware of, but you shouldn't. No company, if you, especially if you have private information, or it might uh, it might be called PII for personally identif identifiable, inform identifiable information, is you can't use ChatGPT, right? The reason is because every time you use it, that data gets sent to their servers. They have the knowledge, they have the history of what you queried. So if you had, if you attached your company's data to ChatGPT, sensitive data, it's no longer, it's um, it's not secure anymore, right? That the, the security is a whole thing with, security with data is like a whole thing in itself. Um, so, that, so that is something that I do understand that Autogen is helping um, with these AI agents. If you can connect to a model, to a like a local model for your company, like you know, just have your own in-house LLM, and then Autogen can connect to that, and then you can use it that way. I hope they I hope they continue and they um, talk about actual use case at some point. That is one example use case from the pharmacy vertical. We have seen big enterprise customers' interest like this from pretty much every industry vertical. Autogen is used or contributed by companies, organizations, universities from A to Z in all over the world. Hey, look at that, used by MemGPT, 
uh, quadrant, quadrant, however that's actually pronounced. Uh, let's see what else on here. MongoDB, um, unstructured database. Uh, we have video in MMGTP, MemGPT. Oh, we V8 as well. Um, so some of these universities, the ones that I recognize anyways. We have seen hundreds of example applications and some organizations use this autogen as backbone to build their own agent platform and others use autogen for diverse scenarios, including research and investment to novel and creative applications of multiple agents. Autogen has a large community, very active of developers, researchers, AI practitioners. They are very active, like I mentioned earlier. They are so like every active other week is a new version update. A passion, passionate. I'm so amazed by that, and I appreciate all the recognition and awards received by Autogen in such a short amount of time. For example, we have uh, been selected, our paper is selected by The Sequence as one of the top favorite AI papers in 2023. To share a quickly, to quickly okay. share the latest news. Was Last Friday, it. our initial multi-agent experiment benchmark. on the challenging Gaia benchmark turned out to achieve the number one accuracy in the leaderboard in all the three levels. That shows the power of Autogen okay, in solving complex tasks. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, if you're not sure what the Gaia benchmark is, basically uh, you can ask a simple question, like a question that you and I could answer, like, um, I don't know if you like, like sports, like who has the most strikeouts in baseball? You might not actually know the answer, but you can quickly on your phone, search it, and it'll tell you, and you can know within seconds. Or um, a simple riddle, right? I can't think of one top of my head, but if, you give it, if you're given a simple riddle, um, then you can figure it out and you can answer it, right? So it's supposed to be simple questions based on level one, two, and three, like I guess easiest to hardest. So let's go, um, let's look at it up real quick. Guy uh, benchmark. So Hugging Face has a benchmark data set. I think I think this is it. Yeah, it's all this. Um, so here, so here they have questions. The level, so one, two, or three. Uh, the actual, I believe this is the actual answer. Okay, okay. Here's an easy question. How many studio albums were published by Mercedes Sosa between 2000 and 2009? Included. You use you can use the latest version of Wikipedia. You don't actually have to know this answer, but you have to be able to know how to look it up and then get the answer. And that's what's that's what they're saying here is can the Autogen framework or those other models. Can they look up the answer by writing code that retrieves the answer, queries it, and searches it online, and then actually get the answer back? That's what this is about. Can we be? Can the models be asked simple questions and actually retrieve that answer? And then that's what I guess that's what they're saying here is the average score for I believe this is Autogen whatever version zero point one. Um, that this using the GPT four Turbo llm it was able to achieve that so that's that's all this is and i don't know some of these model names i'm not really familiar with them except maybe auto gpt4 um friday I, i'm not really familiar with these but either way it looks like that at least this version of autogen scored better overall and the big potential this is one example of our effort in answering a few open hard questions such as how to design a optimal multi-agent workflow it's a big question Autogen is under active research and development and is evolving at a very fast pace. Here Scaling are examples is, of our exciting thing. new features or ongoing research. First, for evaluation, we are making agent-based evaluation tools or benchmarking tools. Second, we are making rapid progress in further improving the interface hmm. to make it even easier to build agent applications. Okay, so evaluation, right? We went over auto autogen benchmark, which kind of tells you um, the workflow that you have. Can it perform well against certain models? Um, is it successful or does it fail those tests? It, that that was still kind of uh, that still needs improved on, I believe. And then as far as the interface goes, lowering the barrier is kind of a big thing as well. So autogen studio, we are aware of. I just created, I made a full course um, the first day of the thirty one thirty one day challenge. So that was the first day. So it's, you know, no code or low code if you're writing skills. Auto build, creates the agents for you, decides the agents, and then uh, creates that workflow and tries to perform the task. Uh, FSM stands for finite state machine. I'm assuming that's what it stands for here. 
So you can have, it's kind of like the graph modeling where you can have a team of agents here. Then once they're done, then you can send that response over to another team of agents. Then once that's done, you can kind of send that to another team. And you can kind of keep doing that. So it's like you can direct um, the responses from what a team comes up with to another team and you can, until you reach the last team and you, that resp that res their response is the last answer. The learning capability allows agents to remember teachings from users or other agents long-term and improve over time. And fourth, Autogen is integrated with new technologies like OpenAI Assistant and multimodality. I just want to go over one thing here real quick, this custom model. When this first came out, I think a version like 16, I, b I believe, I tried this out, right? I, I actually worked on it a whole night. I could not get it to work. And the idea of this, I think, I think they've updated it since then. So I'm going to try it again. But the idea of this is instead of having, um, I believe the idea was instead of having Olama or something LM Studio or Llama CPP, right? So that you can have an open source model uh, locally on a server, and then you connect Autogen, the config to that server. So now everything is free, right? Everything is local and free. Well, instead of having a separate server and a separate software or downloading libraries, custom model could do that for you and to kind of take care of that. Now, I don't know under the hood what libraries it used, but it you could just have um, that within Autogen itself. You want to worry, at least worry about other libraries that would be done for you. But hope, I'll get back to that and see if that got Technologies fixed. like OpenAI Assistant and multimodality. Please check our blog post from the website to understand more details. It's almost over. I appreciate the huge amount of support okay. from all the, now. from everyone in the community. <clears throat> And we need more help yeah. in solving all the challenging problems. Okay, so that's over. Um, I think the one of the things that I wish they would have done is actually, you know, data science department, Autogen is helping us develop a production-ready multi-agent framework. That's gives me nothing, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> to be honest, that doesn't say anything. Uh, it reduced the barrier to clinical data analytics enabling broader community to derive insights. Um, I mean, just a lot of words put together. I, I guess it's they're just kind of saying it's really just giving analytics based on some information that they have in-house, which, I mean, that's great. Um, I would love to have seen, I just would love to have seen an actual, an actual real life use case, not just saying what, I mean, these are, these are so broad, right? We'll get there. I thought the benchmark is interesting. Um, yeah, I didn't really know, I didn't really know this. But you know, I don't really know what that says. Like, just because it can answer it, but it did use the GPT four Turbo family. So I'm curious what it could do on like local open source LLMs. But you know, they they're probably given grants or something to have. Uh, they have a bunch of money to use GPT. So the open questions, right? So that they they discussed here. So how to enable scale, safety, and human agency. So the scaling, I think, is <clears throat> something big, right? You know, so we can create a service, right? Like for me, for myself, I can I can uh, create like a 2.0 version of the YouTube AI service where it does even more for me. I basically don't really have to do much at all except speak the script that I'm given. But what if we? What if I wanted to send that out to everybody, right? So how how's this scale? How can we have agents um, scale for everybody, right? Or that's just a simple example. But what if you need to scale to um, huge companies that have vast amount of data? Right? How can we do that? Creating uh, highly capable agents. Yes, um, these are all about like teaching your agents. I think there are a lot of ways to have this done with like LangChain and in-house data, depending depending on what you what you want. Um, of course, privacy is a secure thing. I mean, is a big thing. Uh, lowering the barrier. Right. So this this is kind of interesting because um, if you don't know, like if you, it's perfectly okay. Right. If you don't don't code or you don't really have any interest in coding or you um, you want to, but you're just not quite there yet. Perfectly fine. First off, I'm learning all the time. So I, I like I, I really suck at some things, but lowering the barrier such as Ogen Studio. Hope that improves a lot in the future. Hope they create a way so that we can have gr these group chats um, in different teams. Right. I think that would be helpful if that was made easier. Right now, it seems kind of forced. Um, whenever I looked at it um, a couple of versions ago. So hopefully that gets updated. And then actually evaluating, having better tools to evaluate <clears throat> your workflows or 
having your workflow tested multiple times or many times or as many times as you want um, and then seeing overall that could mean that your prompts aren't very good it could mean that maybe you need a different model you know making those easier make lowering the barrier to actually have these benchmarks um, i think will come okay i know that was short but i want to know your thoughts what you think uh, about this quick video maybe what do you think about something that i said i'll leave them down in the comments um, i want this to really be an open discussion of uh, kind of what you're hoping it, it can achieve um, in the near future, like this year, maybe by this fall, like what, what updates do you hope that it improves on? This is day 17 of the 31 day month challenge for March. Uh, but we're getting, getting there. I have quite a few things coming up that I think you'll be very interested in. Hopefully you watched yesterday's video where we had uh, a whole workforce based on using different models from Hugging Face and putting them all together with a few agents. And we had uh, function calls. We had quite a few of them. And we kind of separated out the code more um, to kind of something that you might use for your own project. Here's some more videos on Autogen. Please let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next video.